What is up expat fam? It is the Mateo portion of the Global Expats and today I'm going to be sharing with you part two of Mateo's Italian adventure while I was volunteering on an organic farm in southern Italy. In my first video over here, I told you the motivations as to why I wanted to move abroad. And I left you with me sitting on the plane. So my first video on why I moved abroad, it's been gaining a bit of traction and people have been messaging me, asking me to carry on sharing my story. This is going to be a continuation of my story, part two of my mini series of Matteo's Italian adventure. So I'll just pick up where I left off. All right, so I was sitting on this plane in South Africa, waiting to fly to Italy. And I was insanely calm. I didn't feel doubt, I didn't feel worry, didn't feel panic, I was just mellow. That's when I knew I'd officially made the right decision and that this was a start of something awesome. So I landed in Rome the next day and I took a bus from Rome airport to the central station which is where all the trains are because I had a hotel booked there for one night before I went to the farm. I can clearly still remember that first night in Italy. So picture this, you're 22, you just finished studying about four months earlier and now you decided to jump on a plane, move to a foreign country and just live with a family that said you could come and live there. Can you imagine the like the fear that you get out of that? So like multiply that by 10 and that's what I was a little bit feeling that first night. I was sitting in my hotel, I was, I was feeling pretty overwhelmed. I didn't go far from my hotel, I didn't go sightseeing, I didn't go explore the city. I pretty much stayed within the 100 meter range of my hotel just so that I could get, get dinner. I mean, I fell straight for the first tourist restaurant and paid an astronomical price for being there. I had a pizza and beer and that did ease what I was feeling, but I mean, guys, it's scary at 22 to just drop everything that's happening in your life, jump on a plane and go and volunteer somewhere across the world. I was pretty nervous in the morning and when I got on my bus, the nerves kind of calmed down. It was a two hour journey and it really just made me appreciate my decision because driving through that stunning Italian countryside, I really just got to take it all in. It was April, so the greenery was coming. It was turning summer. It was just a beautiful day. And that just made me feel a lot better about my decision. So what was this farm? Well guys, it's called Italy Farm Stay and it's an agriturismo in Southern Italy located two hours between Rome and Naples. An agriturismo is a self-sustaining organic farm. There are thousands of these around Italy and most of them you can actually apply to volunteer at. There I stayed with a family. They were an awesome family, which consisted of the father Giuseppe, the mother Maria, the son Antonello who ran the farm and the guest lodging, his girlfriend Linda who was from the Netherlands, their two daughters, and then a bunch of other volunteers that also lived at the farm and were doing the same thing that I was doing. It was in Pesco Solido, which is a little town on the top of a hill. And it's at this base, there is a massive city called Sora. Fun fact about Sora is that nobody speaks English. They only speak Italian. And so it was extremely difficult to actually go to town and try and ask for stuff or try and communicate. So it was a learning curve that you had to overcome and you just end up using your hands, facial expressions and pointing a lot. Sora is as Italian as it gets. I mean, there were no tourists there. There were no, nobody's passing through. It is a local city that only has Italians in it. And so it's untouched by foreigners. I volunteered from the beginning of April to the end of May. And my roles included looking after the fruits and vegetables, tending to the animals, replanting or transplanting olive trees whereby we cut down a bad olive tree and we actually crack it open and stick another olive branch inside and then make that good strain of olive grow out of the other tree. They grew their own olives so that they made their own family olive oil. They had their own grapes for their own wine. Before I went to Italy, I didn't really like wine all that much, but being there, we had it for lunch and dinner and so I became very accustomed to the taste and now I truly enjoy it. And we just had to look after all the stuff. Uh, did general maintenance, I helped wherever I was needed, I helped run the farm, I helped just keep everything in check. On top of helping with the farm, they had 
B&B, so people can come and stay there for their corporate escapes or couples can come for the anniversaries and there are a whole bunch of activities to do around there such as horse riding, going to waterfalls, just seeing the fauna and flora. They also had yoga, like a yoga retreat, so you could come and do a week's worth of yoga and they had outdoor ones and they were building new studios and so people could come there and escape from their busy schedules, their daily lives in the cities and just come and relax for a little bit. So as a volunteer, I worked from 8 to 12 every morning, so it's just four hours a day, and then you're free to do what you wanted with the rest of your day. In between, you'd clean the dishes, you'd help prepare dinner, and you'd just sort out all the guests' rooms. The other volunteers and I used to just roam the city in our free time, eat gelato, go for pizza, go and buy salami and cheese from the local market on a Thursday, and just explore the city and really engulf ourselves in the Italian culture. I mean, there was so much to do here. There were waterfalls, there were animal sanctuaries, they had a rare Marsicam brown bear that I never even heard of. I went and saw that, so that was a real treat. They had just horse riding through the wilderness. You can hike the mountain, you can go see the old church on top of the hill, go visit old castles. There was just so much to do in this region. We used to rumble through the forests and find World War II like bits and bobs, such as like this mortar and helmet. On the farm, my best friend was Eli. He was another volunteer from Israel, and we pretty much did everything together. It's really awesome because you really get to learn about somebody else's culture, and you just kind of start teaching each other stuff while picking up the Italian culture and language. Other people I met there were like Nicholas from France, I met a German girl, and another bunch of other volunteers came through for very short periods of time. They even had study abroad kids come from overseas, and they would spend their semester over there just going through all the Italian agriculture and learning new stuff because odds are they came from like a biology class or biology course so that was really interesting for them to come and learn. Being on this farm was an incredible experience and I would not trade it in for anything in the world. If you are young and ever get a chance to go and volunteer you should really go and do it. Just say yes and figure it out along the way. Not only did I learn all about the nature that was in southern Italy, I learned about all the different fruits, the vegetables, the plants, how do you just keep things running on your own self-sustaining farm? It was a massive increase in my confidence and a massive boost to my self-growth. I got the opportunity to see a different side of Italy. Pristine lakes, rivers, streams, waterfalls. I got to see something that not an everyday tourist in Italy gets to see. On the farm, I got to understand how to be resourceful with everything around you, as well as how to relax more and not work as hard because as most of you know, Italians have a pretty laid back life and so not stressing is a major factor as to why they live long and why they're so healthy. I never knew that taking that first leap and going to Italy would have such an impact on my life and it's really resulted in who I am today and was the start to developing myself and getting to where I am now. It's an experience that you cannot compare to anything else and you will grow as a human and you'll be grateful for the decision that you had made. Have you ever volunteered overseas before, be it on the kibbutz in Israel or an organic farm in Europe? Let me know in the comments and tell me what it was like and what you felt and what drove you to actually go and do it. As my time on the farm came to a close, I had to consider my next few steps. And through talking with my mom, we came up with the idea that I should go and study Italian somewhere in Italy. So that's what part three is going to be, studying Italian in Florence. I hope you enjoyed part two of Matteo's Italian Adventure, my mini series that I'm going to be producing in the next couple of weeks. So be sure to hit that like button and stick around for part three coming up soon.